Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree, the true continuation of peak that is Elden Ring itself. Like, let's be for real, after how well Elden Ring was made, did anyone really doubt that the DLC was going to be bad? Of course not. From what I've played, the DLC has been a great blend of atmospheric, challenging, beautiful, and fulfilling. From the exploration to its bosses, this DLC has been absolutely packed with content. The content which I will be going into today, so I can explain how much I love this damn DLC. So of course, if you guys enjoy this video, like and subscribe, Subscribe. My name is Ebonic and I hope you guys enjoy my Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree review. Alright, first of all, call me an Elden Ring Glazer all you want. I started playing Elden Ring months ago, and now I have a freaking bloody claimer on my wall, so maybe I liked it a little bit. But anyways, let's just begin with the start. You begin this journey by being sent to the Shadow Realm by the Meeble Hand of Mikola, and you start in this random air cave, but then you walk out to see this absolutely beautiful view. And oh yeah, there's an absolutely abysmally huge candle that has like a million HP. Great, we have another three sentinel, but damn do we gotta talk about this landscape, because jeez, ghost tombstones and the whole vibe of of the shadow realm gives off it's just majestic especially with this crazy ant earth tree thingamabob that's like miles away i do kind of have a bit of mixed feelings about this filter though like at the start you're like ooh, edgy but then the longer you play it and like you go into a cave and you're like thank god i've got my sweet wampus regular eldering filter back it's really not that deep though i think they should just unbreak that contrast slider and bring it up a little but let's get back to the map now there's three but basically two paths you can go with the right that has a boss i'll talk about later the middle where i have no idea where it goes and the left that goes to the lion, but I'll talk about that piece of shit later. However, right now I'm gonna talk about the giant fire bringing my jig in the fire giant. Yeah, this might just be one of the most tankiest things in any Souls game to date, and I was not trying to fight that. So I went straight to the giant archway, which most people probably did in their first playthrough because it looks the most appealing. While making it through this place, there was something I realized. Something that I could and will occur through the entire DLC. Every damn enemy hits like a truck. I had like 60 Viga, and my armor was pretty damn thick. But well, some of these guys were one piece comboing me into next week, I don't get it. I was dashing through this damn place like my ass was under level. I was level 120. 120. Honestly, though, doing this made me feel like I was playing a new game again because of how ass it made me look. Well, I, I was even expecting this because I hovered over a scum nut stream and this guy had like 150 deaths. As soon as I saw that, I knew I was cooked. The design of this little place and the enemies in it are great, too. truly great. And then I saw this guy from that one tease, I was like, it's him! And yeah, even though that guy straight up started breakdancing on my dead body a couple of times, uh, he was a cool little enemy and I hope there's a boss or something like that later in the DLC. But now, then we get to the first of a boss that I fought for the DLC, the Dancing Lion. Packed with enough smoke to kill your granddad with asbestos, the Dancing Lion is a boss that I'm sure we all love and hate. Personally, I believe that the Dancing Lion is a great true first boss for the DLC. It is pretty difficult, but not absolutely god awful at the same time. And its whole moveset and bullshittery gets you absolutely pumped for the ass fucking this game is going to give you for every single boss. Absolutely lovely. A funny thing to point out though, is this thing isn't even a damn lion. It's just two people in a suit. It's like one of them Chinese Dragon Parade thingy my bobs. Me personally, I don't really like these boss all that much because of how much they move but i still like this boss except the second phase it's complete bullshit its second form has like three types it varies throughout the battle wind lightning and ice and it's all on a slider from okay i can dodge this to okay this is some bullshit the wind great to dodge the ice a little bit annoying but the thunder Oh, the thunder. How are you telling me these lightning and ice attacks are dodgeable? Hell nah. I was literally praying that it would change to its wind form, but no. It's like he knows wind is the only fair one to use, so it's like, hmm. Okay, I just did ice twice. Yeah, that rhymes. And then thunder. Wouldn't it be logical to do wind again? No, no, no. Let me do ice again. Like, come on, man. Although I hated these attacks, I actually like the boss. And damn, does he look cool. A bit scary, but damn, does he look cool. But he also dropped the most goofy helmet I've ever seen. So great. Riddle me this, what's the opposite of left? Right. Speaking of right, I took the right path to fight the next boss and streamlined straight towards that castle. Don't worry, I did come back to explore these later, it was very cool. But anyways, why are these enemies so damn tanky, dude? Now like this guy trying to be Radagon, like come on, they also fuck this guy in particular. I swear these guys are so tanky that I actually think if I fight Radagon after this, it would be so easy. But anyways, after a beautiful walk through this castle, we make it to the next boss. And oh shit. Is that a dive? <laughs> 
Okay, listen. Before I say anything, this is how many deaths I had before I did this boss. And this is after. Yeah, this is just the beginning of the DLC. I swear, give Renana Melania's healing ability, and I'm pretty sure she would be a harder boss. But anyways, Renala's twin sister, Rolana, yep, they're twins, is a dual-wielding booty-kicking badass who is just always on straight smoke. You do not get, like, any breathing room from this lady. It's absolutely crazy. I should have had to pull out the imaginary technique fire because blood was not doing shit all. Until I realized she's literally chilling in a pool of water, so I then had to pull out the imaginary, imaginary technique ice. This is the first time I've ever had to pull out this move, so you guys can have a guess on how damn hard this boss is. Rolana's first phase consists of a bunch of slashes and pounding with the occasional magic swords. I don't know what it is about these, but I just could not dodge half of these attacks Rolana threw at me. It was so stupid. And then Rolana starts looking in, in the second phase and gets the fire and magic sword and it's like, god damn. Somehow she gets even more aggressive. Like, how is that even possible? I died so many times, raged even more, and it just got to a point where I died so much and got tired that I just gave up, went to bed, and just laid in my own defeat. You guys might be wondering something. If my character is in the blade armor, then why am I sitting at disgrace with a different set on? Well, I died so many times that I had one thing I could do to win. A training arc. I decided to explore the area of the DLC, even accidentally, I don't even know how, arriving at Mesmer's crib, but I needed to get myself more powerful, so I had to take a trip back to the land between, more specifically Kalu. In Kalu, I went to fight the two putrid avatars, and oh sweet Jesus, ain't it lovely to hit something and actually do some damage for once. Killing these two avatars gave me some like psychics like the Opaline hard tier and the green burst crystal, so I can actually not have a shit psychic for once, and with Blade initially being killed physically for his armor, I once again Again, killed him spiritually, like I'm fucking Godfrey killing that damn lion, moving Serbonic to the next phase of his strength, wearing the black gold knight's armor. And yeah, I did kill him earlier, I forgot to say that. Of course, I'm keeping the Sir Bionic helmet though. However, there was actually one problem with this character development armor, and that it was as heavy as balls. So, funnily enough, to make myself stronger than Rilana, I went to her twin sister Renala in order to respect, and with my endurance up to code, I came back to kick Rilana's ass. I mean, I was still getting my ass kicked a little bit, but after finally dodging some moon balls and getting some knocks, I finally defeated her, and holy Jesus Christ was I happy about that. You know, the determination of being Rolana reminds me of something. The determination that you guys will get if you like and subscribe. If you've been enjoying this video, please consider to like and subscribe. It'll really mean a lot. And even as well, leave a comment on what you would like to see next. But other than that, back to the video. Alright, alright. From this Rolana battle, I wanted to get straight to Mesma. Fuck out of the way, dumbass hippo. I wanna fight the snake man. But after finding the entrance to the Diddy Drake fireman, I prepared myself for one of the best Elder fights I've ever had. This damn Drake wannabe is an absolute amazing fight. It's not too difficult, the moves are fair, and they look cool as fuck. Yeah, I absolutely got my ass kicked constantly throughout this battle, but it was so enjoyable nonetheless. Yes, those stupid delayed attacks got me every time, but seeing some cool and fire attacks paired with an absolute spear destroying you, initially I thought this guy was going to be the final boss, but no, no, no. This is just a halfway point. Speaking of halfway point, then get this guy to half HP and you get the goddamn second phase, and oh shit. I didn't know they got the Ebonic leak in this cutscene, god damn. Just like the beginning, you get absolutely clouted by a fireball, which for some reason reminds me of the Millennia second phase. Actually, as a matter of fact, the whole Mesmer fight kind of just reminds me of an alternate Millennia. Maybe because they're basically siblings, but ah, uh, whatever. The second phase is definitely way easier than the first. I literally almost killed him the first time I did it. And also, the second phase is definitely way more crazy looking with the snakes just flying everywhere. This shit was like the Diddy party, bro. There were dick and balls everywhere. You should have been there. But with a bunch of tries and all of that, determination shiz, we finally beat Mesmer, beginning the second half of the DLC. And with that, that finishes my review of the Elden Ring DLC. Even though I haven't actually finished it yet, what I have played has been absolutely great, and in summary, the Elden Ring DLC is truly great. I got my ass kicked constantly, but damn was it worth it, because the feeling you get when you beat these bosses is crazy. 100% there are bosses that are harder than Melania in this DLC. I mean, I haven't fought them yet, but they definitely are. My personal favorites for this DLC were Mesmer, Rolana, and this random opium lightning guy I fought in a dungeon. Okay, hold up, this dungeon guy is actually really Pretty cool. I should actually write a paragraph about this guy. But other than that, that is my Elden Ring DLC review. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, go tell me. And if you want to watch me play the rest of the DLC, I stream on this very channel. But yeah, goodbye.